Welcome to Give Your Wall Some Soul. I'm Shannon Grissom. Wasn't that a great monkey shot? He just cracks me up. What a great way to start the show. Well, last time on Give Your Wall Some Soul, I worked on a painting out of my mind, and <laughs> I was totally out of my mind. <laughs> and uh, it was a vision of a field. And usually I bring that in and show you what I've done to it um, in between sessions. But this time, I didn't bring it in because I threw it out. I painted on it and I, I got to the point where I just didn't like it and I made it much worse. So I decided it needed to be thrown away. And uh, I thought about bringing it in and just, uh, <laughs> you know, showing you that I was going to throw it out. And I thought, nah, it's too ugly. <laughs> it needed to be gone and I was just done with it. So I threw it out. So that's it. Normally we talk about what I did and, and we're not going to do that this time. I'm really excited about today's show. We're going to work on a painting of, there's a, there's a country club, San Juan Oaks, that's by my house. And I'm doing a whole series of, of different views of the club. And so today we're going to do an interesting view of San Juan Oaks. And there are a number of factors that are involved. We're going to paint large again. It's been a while since we've done that. And we're using a full color palette. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on the sky and and of course all the stories that are involved with it. So let's get going. Now normally when you're learning to paint and they talk about painting a sky, they always caution beginning painters about not using too bright or too dark a color. And I'm going to do exactly what they tell you not to do. I'm going to use a dark, rich blue. Here's some uh, ultramarine blue. And I'm going to add some phthalo blue to that. Oh, nice. Really a rich blue. And I might, I'll add a little bit of white just to bring out the color, just a little bit, but not a lot. Maybe this much. Oops, contaminated my white. Okay. Now that's a screamer. That's a little too, a little too screaming for me. So I'm going to tone that down with some ultramarine blue and a little bit of red. Always a little bit of red. Now what's different about this palette? First of all, you don't usually see too much blue. I'm, I'm using a full range palette for this series. Everything's cyclical, so there were times when I wasn't using a lot of blue. I need some more of that. And I was using more of the warmer colors. Things are cooling down, the seasons are cooling down, so it's time to go for the full range. Okay, that's a nice blue, but it's gonna need some red to actually gray it down. Believe it or not, we're adding a bright color to tone it down. That's nice. I still think it's a little too bright. I'm gonna put it down. Let's see, what, what does that look like? Ooh, that's, that's pretty loud, I like that. Well, I'm just going for it. Let's be bold. The whole thing ab about this painting is I, I uh, took the pictures on a really boring day and I'm going to experiment with color today. Starting at the top, oh that's great, some nice crisscross strokes. I'm hanging on to the canvas because if you've seen me do this before, I have this little guillotine thing up here and uh, I don't like how it always scares me halfway through the show when it falls down. Wow, this is really absorbing. This canvas is very absorbent. I think it's probably, I'm, I'm judging the color way too early, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna just put it down and wait till I get something relative against it before I make, decide whether I'm gonna change it. 
Now you'll notice I'm using a square brush rather than a filbert. That's great for straight edges. This painting has a lot of space. When I do a lot of work that's very detailed and or crowded or lots of things going on in one painting, like the sock monkeys, I invariably have to go, you know, or if you spin around too many, too many crowds, I have to do something with lots of space. It just gets to the point where I need my space. Okay, let's see. I'm not quite sure what that does there, so I'm going to kind of draw that in. This is a nice counterpoint to the lightness on the roof. Now normally there's a lot of stuff going on in the sky, people painting clouds, there's a variation where the top is darker and it gets lighter as it comes down here. I may do that and I may not. It just depends on my mood. Today we're going to play with color. We're going to get bold. Nothing safe about what we're doing tonight. I'm using lots of medium so that it flows really well. Yep, that's, that's working. It may just be too blue, but I don't want to change that until I get some of the other things down. Well, actually, I want to change it right now, but I don't think I should change it until I get some other things down. Okay, so I get back at that, and that's already a nice, nice contrast. This is a case of not worrying about, it, it's, it's, it's an unusual subject matter, so it's just the top of a building. There's not even a lot of vegetation there. And I'm not wor it wasn't, wasn't a case of worrying about, was this marketable? It was just something that really struck me, and oh, I really want to paint that. And how did my palette change? Well, you know, for the last several months, everything's been extremely warm. And not, not really balanced. I may have put some blues out on the palette, but didn't, uh, didn't use them. And uh, I think it, for me, what happens is it's, it's a combination of, of my life getting more into balance and then my palette follows suit. So, um, you know, interesting thing happened where a friend of mine gave me a CD with this awesome clarinet solo on there. And I hadn't played my clarinet in a long time. And I, and I listened to that CD and it was awesome. And so I got out my clarinet and played. And the very next day, when I set up my palette, the thing about the clarinet is it's got some, it's got a nice full range. It's got some really great high notes and some really deep, somber notes. And it's like a palette. If you only have the warm tones, it's only like having the high notes. So when you add some of the blues and some of the cooler colors, it gives it that full range. So it translated from the clarinet to the palette to the life. So we'll see what happens here when I'm done. Yeah, I already, I already know I want to change this, but I'm going to cover this first before I do. One thing that's great about painting this large and using a huge brush is you get instant gratification, and it feels good to do big strokes. Well, I got lucky. I didn't mix enough paint of that particular color. So I could mix some more paint and try to get exactly that color, or I could start making some gradations, and I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add some dark to the top, because that's been bugging me since we started, and I'm going to go ahead and change that. And um, I'm forgetting my advice about telling you to wait till I get the thing covered. So I'm going to put some dark up here on the top, 
and I'll add, this will be a lighter gradation down here. Because one of the cool things about this building and where it sits, it's on, it's on the top of a little hill, so when you're here, you really get this sense of, of here, you look up here, and it's just dark blue, beautiful sky, and here you get a lighter blue, a sense of distance. So if I make this lighter, it will actually give that more space, and that'll be more interesting. Um, and you're not getting the gradation quite in the picture, but, um, you know, if I wanted to copy the picture exactly, um, well, I don't ever want to do that. <laughs> so never mind, I'm going to just shut up and paint. <laughs> for a minute anyway. Okay, I'm going to take some straight thalo blue and put that, oh that's nice. Okay, we're changing this from a fall day, which was when I took the picture. I think one of the cool things I remember about one of the times I was a, being a kid and going to a carnival and being on the Ferris wheel as the sun's setting and you get this incredible dark blue sky and the dark blue turns to black. But it's still light out, and um, it's just a really cool feeling to be up there in the sky and see that and, and watch the color do that. So I'm going to go ahead and pretend that that's what's happening here. And that's another cool thing about painting. You can pretend, you know, it's your own little world. Where do you want to go? I'm getting on the Ferris wheel. Oh, that's cool. made me think about the last full moon we had, which was, was spectacular. But I'm not going to paint that in there today. This will just be a Ferris wheel type day. I am varying my strokes. I'm doing a kind of a crisscross thing to give it some energy. I could leave it with virtually no strokes. But I don't want to do that. Either way works. Okay, I'm going to look at my reference photo just to check the drawing to see what that does. It comes here. That's close. Whoops, not supposed to be blue there. One thing about this Stella Blue is it takes over and it stains really good. So I'm taking that and a little bit of liquid and just getting the worst of it off. I got some on my hands before I even started painting and there's no way it's going to even come off. It's just one of those things. So that's one of those oh wells and it will add interest later, we hope. Okay, so I want to make a little bit of a lighter blue down to the bottom, and this time, instead of starting at the top and working my way down, I'm going to start with the lightest stuff here and mark, work my way up. I'm just going to mix that into the mix I already have. Now, if I just add white to this, the problem with that is that it's too cotton candy blue. I mean, it might have been a Ferris wheel or something I was thinking about, but that's not, I don't want it to look like a carnival here. Because I just really like the architecture and the quietness of being on that hill. And so even though I like the sky from the carnival, I don't want that, I don't want that in the painting. Okay, again, I added some cad red light to gray that down a bit. This is a nice medium blue. I could probably start with almost a white color and I may try that and bring that up. I'm, I think I'll try that. No almost about it. Let's just see what happens. So I'm going to get some liquid. I changed my mind halfway through. Hope you saw that. Go straight into the white. And I'm going right over my drawing. I don't care. These were just approximations of where the bushes are going to be. And besides, I'm totally changing the landscaping, adding some more color. 
I'll probably add stuff to the building that's not there too. Why not? Okay. I love it when you put the white down, you can't see anything. We've talked about this before. It's not a good thing. Okay, so now I'll add some of this blue. But because there's white there, it'll be toned down. I'm going to scrub that into that. And I may, I'm not sure if I need to make that lighter or not. Probably. Yeah, I like that better. I think the whole thing needs to be lighter, but we'll worry about that later. I don't want to spend the whole hour on the uh, sky. Although, I have to warn you, this could be a two-parter. I'm actually thinking it will be. Now I'm going to get that other dirty brush that has a darker blue on it and bring that blue down into that. Thalo blue, there's always this controversy on, on how to pronounce it, thalo, thalo, and um, I have some teachers swear by one way, another by another, so consequently you're going to hear me saying it two different ways, <laughs> it's the same color. Either way, it's a very powerful color, a little bit just takes over. So when you start to add that to a mix, just add a little bit first, then see what's going on. Oh, I like that. A little bit of stuff's happening here. Okay. More crisscross strokes. Okay, if I were in the studio, to, you know, you can do one of two things. I can raise up the canvas when I'm working on the smaller stuff and lift that up. And in the studio, I would probably do that. <clears throat> but I'm not going to stay down there and go back and forth. So the other thing I would do, if nobody was watching, <laughs> is I'd just get down. This is, what, this is what I do at home. Combination of moving it up and down on the canvas, on the, on the easel. And just getting down into the canvas. Oh, that's wonderful. Lots of energy with stuff going on here. Makes it look like something's happening there in the distance. I have to change the direction so it doesn't look like the sky just... I'm going right into the building, that's okay. We don't, we, you know, I've talked about this a million times. I don't want the strokes to look like they ran away when they got than when they're meeting something. They can do that, there just can be no evidence. And I'm lightly bringing some of that light up further and further and further and making a gradation. So I don't have any more paint, haven't been putting any more paint on my brush, I'm just scrubbing it harder as I move further up. Okay. So, is that working? It's working, it's working. Okay, um, there are a couple little places that are not so subtle. There's a time to be subtle when you're painting and there's a time to be totally in your face. And um, this is a subtle, nice mellow time. It's like with Phrasing in music, or even, or even if you think about how they don't play 20 fast songs on the radio without putting a slow song in there. Okay, that's just an imperfection in the canvas, so I'm going to leave that and get rid of my little brush strokes here.
Cool. Okay, that's a good start. You can tell that there's a sky going out here. Um, right here, that needs to be a little more subtle. And also, it's not a good idea to have a line right here next to that. That has to be more discreet. So I'm going to blend that a little more. Yeah. That's one thing to be conscious of, is always think about wh where are things meeting or kissing or touching. They, they need to be in appropriate places. And I can just hear my director in her head going, I can't believe she's saying this! <laughs> I can just hear her. I'm psychic. I know she's probably back there going, but this, you know, this, but that's just true. Needs to be appropriate. <laughs> Is, is my director still there? Is she having a heart attack? Okay. All right. I warned them when I started today it wasn't going to be the same old show. <laughs> I was just in the mood. Okay. But you know what? That really helped the sky. Look at that. See? Now everything's appropriate. <laughs> so we're doing okay. All right. Now let's go on to the roof. So I'm going to take a look at the top of the chimney first and throw in, let's see, I need some rust. First I think I'll have to clean off my palette just a little bit so I have some room. You have to make room for the red. So I'm just going to scrape some of this blue over slightly. And, and of course I'm totally out of white because I, I use that on the, on the sky. Yeah, I'm happy with that. It's a good thing or you would have seen me paint that for another half hour. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. You'd turn the channel. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I know I would. Okay, just put some more white out on my palette. We've got two sides. Shadow side, sunlight. The biggest, um, we talked about um, one of the biggest mistakes you'll make as an amateur is making the sky too dark. Now I know that's a big mistake and I did it, and there are things that you know and you can break the rules and you do that on purpose, so that's fine. Um, for the uh, shadow side, I'm going to be a little more conscious of, I don't want that too dark. I, I want that more subtle and lots of different colors. So I'm going to do some purples and uh, some nice grays for the shadow side. So I'm going to grab some of the blue from the sky. That helps it be harmonious. Grab a little bit of that purple. Ooh, that's a nice violet. Now I can hear my painting teacher saying, oh, that's too sweet. Well, you know what? It's only too sweet if that's, well, okay, this is how I see it. If you're painting, if you're, if, okay, like food. You can't have, for me, cake, ice cream, whatever. It could never be too sweet as long as you have enough water or coffee to go with it. It's not too rich. It's not too sweet. So the same thing with pigment. Um, if it's something that suits you and you really like it, eh, it's got to be all right. So um, I figure if it's too sweet for other people, when they paint it, they can paint it in colors that aren't so sweet. They can go sour. So um, I'm going to tone it down just a little bit because I don't want it saccharine. That's nice. Now, in this case, I toned it down before I used the Cad Red Light. This time I used Cad Yellow Deep. And that's because it was a complement to the violet. And the red was more of a complement to the blue. I'm tempted to use the same dirty brush for the shadow side. <laughs> dare I, dare I? Let me start with some purple first and um, just make that nice little divider line. I'm just scrubbing it in. Doesn't have to be perfectly straight. 
especially not for the first statement. And let's see, right here, I'm going to just scrub this in too, but I don't want that to be the same color. That would be boring. I'm not doing boring today. It may be wrong, it may not work, but today is not going to be boring. Okay. Now what else can we do? Instead of just adding one color on the shadow side, we need to just do lots of different colors over here. There's some hair. And I'm going to start adding some greens, because I was talking about doing a full range of color here. See, that green is nice. It's just a little subtle change into the violet, so it makes a nice different gray. Not the same thing all over the place. And if I look at my reference photo, I'm looking at the places where the shadow, the shadow has a lot of different, different colors in it and different values, lightness and darkness. I think the green is going to be good down here close to where the red tile meets. And I know that why, because the red is a complement to the green. So that, that'll set that off nice. I think it kind of goes like this. Not totally even. And in the middle of the shadow, and if you look at any shadow, just about any shadow, the middles of the shadow have a lot of reflected light. So no matter what you see in the photograph, if you were to actually go out to San Juan Oaks and look at this building and look at the center of the shadow, you'd see there was all kind of light in the middle and even some warm light. So I'm going to start throwing some lighter color, even some... I have to clean my knife off or I'll be in trouble. I don't want to contaminate my clean, clean palette colors up here. Okay, so I'm going to grab a little bit of warm color and move some over just in case I did too much. Oh, that's nice. So the value hasn't changed. It's pretty much the same lightness and darkness, but it's warmer. So I'll add the warm, and then I'm going to steal some white and throw that in there. And because my brush was so dirty, you can hardly tell that I did anything different. And um, I kind of figure if I could hardly tell, you really couldn't. So <laughs> you're not going to be able to see that. And I can tell from where we are in the show, this is definitely going to be a two-parter. But you know what? I could surprise you. It could surprise me. Okay, that's a nice light gray for the shadow. I like that. And I also think I need a cleaner brush because I'm just going to keep repeating the same mistake. That's good. See how I start in the center and I'm working out into that, just like I started here and worked into the, some of that darker color? That way, by the time I get out there, I have less paint on my brush. And I'm going to work it in and mix it in with what's already there. And the cool thing is, is when you're just scribbling like this and you're not paying attention, all kinds of neat shapes emerge that you couldn't have planned. I like that. Now it looks good up close, so I gotta stand back. Yeah, that's, that's got some texture. Something's going on with that wall. It might be just a little bit too much of a contrast, so I'm just gonna Push it further. You can always push it further.
Okay, now what's happening here at the top? Well, usually there's a little bit of warmth or something creeping over here. <laughs> it's not good, but uh, I'm going to add a little bit of red. Why? <laughs> not just because I like red. Um, I, I think a lot of times when you see a chimney or something of that nature, there's some rust or something. There, there has to be something metal that's causing that red to happen. Um, so that's usually a natural, a natural thing. And it does add interest. So I'm going to overstate it at first. I mean, just pretty much straight to bread. And then I will tone it down. I'm not doing a straight line because that would be boring. You've got to break it up a little bit. And that's almost, that's almost like way too much. <laughs> it's not almost. It is. But that's okay. I'm going to add some of this and bring it down. Let's see, a little bit of green. And mix it right up with what's there. And I want it to look like it's part of that whole same that same thing. So I'm going to grab some of the color that was there before. This is one of those, uh, I don't know if you ever watched John Madden and his team where he, he loves it when they roll around in the mud and get really, really dirty and it's like, that's when they're playing football. Well, I'm paint tonight, man, because before I even got started, I had all over my hands and my pants and my clothes and um, <laughs> I'll probably scratch my face and have it on there by, by the time I'm through. But anyway, if there was, you know, if there's an all Madden team, I'm definitely, yeah, I mean, I could put a little grease paint here and here and just be set. Um, so this must be the all Shannon team tonight, boy. Too much Diet Pepsi for me. Okay. Hope I don't get in trouble for saying some brand name. Okay. I think my director really wants to go home now. <laughs> okay, so what's happening up there? I think it needs more, more color, more warmth. Oh, that was a little too much, but that's okay. Just keep going. Just say whoops and keep going. Now this, this is good to have some warmth here because that helps separate and show some depth. So I'm definitely going to put that orangey thing here. It's real technical. Orangey thing. It's real peaceful up there at San Juan Oaks. I don't golf, but, <laughs> but I like the architecture of the building. My dad's a golfer. He's out three or four times a week. He's in his 70s and he still golfs that much. He loves it. I would have to give it a try. Okay, I think I need some violet in there. Yeah. I'm too far of a departure. Throw in some of this stuff that was here before and some just straight white and see what happens. And I might need a cleaner brush than this. So we'll get another one. Now some people would paint, and I've done this before too, paint this one solid color and then go back in with layers and layers of different colors. I'm, I'm putting different colors from the beginning and um, and I'll probably still go in with some different colors the second time around. So I think this would be a good two-parter because I would be able to finish it in two shots and you'd be able to see how that, how that happens. And I can bring in another one that's more complicated that I wouldn't necessarily do on a show, but you'll get the same idea from looking at that. Okay, that's nice. Nice dark side of the building. Okay, so what's going on over here? We've got shadow, almost a straight line right here. 
as long as I got that color out. Different brush, nah. We'll use that one. Yeah, see that blue is just creeping. There's certain colors that do that. Now, how did I get this straight line? Well, when I sketched it out, and then when I was through sketching it out, I got a T-square. <laughs> and I laid the T-square on, and I got, you know, I got a, a roughly, you know, pretty good, pretty good line there. And I knew that I wasn't going to get that out when I was painting, but at least it gives you a good, good map to go from. Okay, I'm going to lift this up. Go all the way down to the bottom. Hear my knees crack. Okay. That's good. And this shadow is going to be a lot lighter. Oh, this has got a good drum noise. Awesome! Okay, I got distracted. <laughs> happens all the time. Okay. <laughs> That was really good. This is a masterpiece canvas. I like it. Oops, I'm probably not, okay. I'm not supposed to say what kind of canvas that was. All right, now this, these two shadows can't be the same color. Two different things happening here. This one's actually in shadow. This has got more reflected light going. So this one's going to have to be much warmer over here. Otherwise, it's just going to look funny or what I, you know, would say. I would paint and I'd say, that looks stupid. And that's basically, I don't want that to happen. So, um, so this one will be cool to avoid that. And the center of that shadow is going to have to be light too. So in both cases, you've got edges that are dark and centers. Play with this again. Okay, and that needs to be just a nice little neutral, cool gray. I'm going to start at the bottom. So I'm doing all the shadow work right now, and then we'll go into the light. I'm covering the whole thing, and then I'm just going to slop some light right in the middle. Now, was that planned? No, but I didn't do it, so I figured that's how I'd compensate. <laughs> it was like I got to that point point, thought, oh, I should have done that. But you know what? As you can see, either route works. It doesn't matter how you get there as long as you get there. And sometimes you never get there, like the last painting, and I threw it out. And that's okay. Oh, that, that worked. That might have been a good way to go. Okay, now this side has to have a bunch of warmth in it. So I'm going to grab, I'm tempted to grab the orange, but I'm going to grab, ooh, maybe some, well, we'll see. <laughs> I'm changing my mind halfway through. We've got cad red light and yellow ochre. And let's see if that'll work. It's definitely warmer, way warmer. Might be too much, but we'll see. And I'm fixing my drawing here because that, that needs to come down like that. And I probably will clean it up with a, a straighter edge later. But I'm just getting this stuff down right now. Okay, so this needs to be cool but lighter. And a little warmer, a little warmer but still cool. So I'm going to put light cool here and then real light in the middle.
I'm going to throw some cad yellow deep in the center of this, right over the top of what we've got. If I put it down first, it's going to be too strong. Feels good to be painting big again. Maybe after the first of the year we'll do a 60 by 48. This is 36 by 48. Okay. And now I need some cool, so I'm going to grab some purple. Ooh, maybe not. It's too close to what was there. Purple and some cad red light. And I have to just kind of let that go for right now. So otherwise I'd spend way too much time on it. Okay, this might be one of those deals where, where if I paint everything but the light part, you'll get an idea of where we're going to go with this thing. You're starting to see that the shadow, it's getting some depth in here. And um, even though I haven't touched this, it's giving you the illusion of what's going to happen here. So that's good. Um, Shall I throw in some vegetation? No, got to finish the shadows first. So get a smaller brush. And I, <laughs> you know what happens, because you've seen it happen here before, if I don't put this back on the easel. I'll paint and forget that it's <laughs> like that, and it falls off and scares me. OK. So I'm going to do. Let's see, what happens under the, uh, I'm pulling my reference photo and I'm holding it in my hand so I can see what happens here. Can't see that far. Okay, so under the tile, it's dark. And I'm just going to slap some dark under there, under these edges. And one side seems to be a lot darker than the other, so we'll, we'll go with that. We'll roll with it. And I'm just going to do purple because I love it. It's a nice, good, cool color. And it's going to look nice with the red. You almost can't hurt it. And what else happens here? You've got the A little bit of wood coming down here, so that, that would be kind of a reddish brown. Everything, at, um, the, the colors are a little bit, uh, well, the colors are a little different at San Juan Oaks, but I'm changing it to what I would like to see. So if I did the paint job, this is what it would look like. Okay, and so that's going to be the wood, and then there's the shadow from the wood there, and that's kind of light, that's lighter, so I'm just going to fill that in lighter. I like these little rough inorganic, organic shapes as opposed to the inorganic where you have to be precise. That makes me tired. So then you have to stay in some sort of line and that just no, it never was fun. a nice little shadow. Okay. Now I'll add that that little piece of wood down here. And let's see, where is where is that shadow? That whole thing is pretty much dark. So first I'm gonna add the the piece of wood. 
I don't know if it's called a header or what, it, what it's technically called. Somebody will email me and tell me, I'm sure. So whoever knows what that's called, let me know. It's not underneath, so it's not a soffit. Up under the shadow would be the soffit. I have no idea what this is called. Now, at San Juan, it's a little grayer blue color, but you know what? I'm going to, you know, how I have to make everything a little redder than it is. That might have been too much. That's going to clash with the tile later. You always have to think about how it's going to behave with its neighbors. Stand back and look at it. That's starting to make sense. Got to make sense. Everything has to make sense. Okay. So now I'll put in some more shadow. I'm going to add a little bit of green to that nice purple there because that will look good with the red too. It's very subtle, but it's going to be nice. They're like, what they remind me of waves. There's a whole hierarchy thing with the tile, which is probably going to be next, next show. Could spend a whole, whole hour on the roof, which I won't do that either because they'll be turning the channel again. I'll get more emails. We're tired of the tile. I hope that you're seeing that you can get, you can say a lot by using a lot of space. You don't have to put in, you don't have to say everything, you don't have to babble. Okay, so that's already got the illusion of a roof up here that we haven't even touched yet. Nice little shadow. Um, what's going on with this thing here? This is just kind of a weird chimney-like thing here. So I'm just going to throw that in to give us some... some texture, something different going on. And actually, we need to throw in some more of that blue right in here for that to make sense. And how about here? This is a lighter, lighter little version of that right here. I'm trying to get out of the way so you can see, especially on these bigger pieces. Okay, so that's starting to make sense too. Good. Okay. Uh, what about, and you'll also notice that if you, if you look at the reference photo, there's a huge part of the building, and I, I chose not to paint the whole thing. I just put, took a section that was really interesting to me. Um, I may do something with those little four windows like that, but right now I'm going to probably, I'm going to put some interesting color on the wall later. I, but I thought about maybe having some bougainvillea growing up here. That would be pretty. It would be a nice break for that. The other thing to think about is, is are you secure enough to leave the space and let it just be? I don't know. I, I don't know where I'm, I am with that yet. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and put in some of the greenery and... I'm going to save actually the walls for last. So what is this doing here? This is more of a, this has got to be in the distance, so I'm going to throw in some little trees back there. I just took some sap green. It's already, it's already diluted, and I'm going to throw that in. And starting with the should be darker down here because this is probably way too dark. Well, actually, I know it is way too dark. Um, should start at the bottom with the darker color and have at the tops of the trees are always lighter. These are things I know, but I don't always do. And I'm just scribbling some greenery in here. There's some red on my brush. That'll add some interest later. Okay, so this is... 
What's going on? Is that whole thing bushes? Do I want to do that or not? I don't know. I think I'm going to change that. Okay, so there was some of that going on, and I need to throw in light. Lots of light. And boy, am I making a mess over here. Madden would be proud. It's amazing what you, what you actually hear <laughs> and recognize. You're out there, you hear the birds, see the squirrels, there's tons of squirrels out there. Probably snakes. I'm adding some extra color in there just for interest. I have to change the shape of this so that that's not boring and that it's not all the same height. Doesn't matter what the tree's doing in the picture, you have to change it. Okay, I think I just got paint on my face. <laughs> okay, so let's see. There's that, and I, I think it needs a, needs a wall right there. So I'm going to grab, try and grab a stiff brush. That's good. Wow, now there's some more white here somewhere. Yeah, I can tell you guys with this much time left in the program, we're definitely going to make this a two-parter. It's our holiday special. Okay, so what do you do when you don't have a, a T-square? You do the best you can. One of the ways that you can really make a nice straight line, that, but for me, it's just a matter of gravity. So I'm going to pick up the canvas, and then I'm going to turn it around. And um, you'll be able to see how you just let the weight, and this is a heavy canvas, you let the weight of your brush make a fairly straight line. It's easier, if I'm going to do a line like this, it's easier for me to just pretty much do something. And, and also you have like a, something to line it up for if you're going to be logical about it, but I'm not. I'm just going to take a, where do I want my straight line to be? About right here? That's good. Sometimes it's easier for me to just do this whole gravity thing and let it fall than it is to do the line in the way that it actually is. Um, so the other thing that would make sense too, and, and sometimes it's just a matter of being able to get into it. So if I didn't feel like scratching to, and getting <laughs> down again on the ground, I could just make this little line here too. And this needs to come out more at an angle. So I'm correcting my drawing as I go. Little Shelby asked me, you know, she, she asked me if a painting was done. I'm going to turn the canvas again. And I said, no. And she said, well, what's wrong with it? And I said, well, no, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just that it's not done. So if you have a cake in the oven and it's not through baking, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just it's still going through its progression to become a cake. So that's how I see the painting. There's, it's not that it's wrong. It's just not done. Some of them never get done, though, and that's when I throw them out. <laughs> they go away. Okay, so let's see. What, what did we have here? That was a nice... Nice thick little uh, wall that I'm going to make. I'm changing the drawing again. And what am I going to do with that? I'm not sure yet. Okay, in these last few minutes, well, we've got a little more than a few, but not much. I'm going to just try and cover some of the greenery and get this side done. We'll get everything done but the roof and the side of the building because next time what we're going to do is really add tons of color here and then we'll be able to finish up any other little bits of color that we'd like to add. So 
So I'm pretending some of this has some nice violet color flowers. Do I want this to be part of a wall? Yeah, I kind of think so. So we'll make some more shadows there. Okay, so that'll be part of the wall too. We're definitely, if you're looking at the reference photo and wondering where am I in relation to that, well, let me know when you find it because I have no idea. <laughs> I'm making it up. Okay, this needs to be dark hair so that there's some sort of separation. And not the same color as the, as the stuff in the background. We need to push that back. Okay, so that's good. Then I can add some light here. That could actually be shadows. It could be... Maybe I'll try making that a lighter color. No, that brush didn't feel good. It was too, not stiff enough. Sometimes you need them really, if they're too floppy, they're not going to hold up for what you're going to do. Um, I intend to really scrub the canvas, so that's not going to work. I'm going to grab some crab, cat yellow deep and white. And I'm going to, by scrubbing this in, I'm erasing the pencil lines so that I don't see what was here. What I was drawing will not be a problem to cover up next time. So this is, this is a way of erasing my drawing in the last couple minutes of this show. Yeah, I think that's going to be more interesting and less confusing. So what are you learning on this show? Well, we're going from a full range, from a palette that was uh, pretty much warm, to something that's full range. That it's okay to throw things out if they don't work. Um, try, try painting something that's bigger than you normally would. You have all kinds of new opportunities when you try a different scale. And what we're doing here is, and what we're doing today and what we're going to do next time we come, is we're really going to experiment with colors that you wouldn't think would go on the building. Now, and, and, and I'm changing the composition. There was a lot of greenery and stuff going here. And you know what? I think I'm going to leave this just really clean. It's just going to be a solid wall. I will throw different colors in the wall, but uh, it's, it's not going to have a lot of organic stuff to break up the shapes. I think that compositionally, with the undulation of the roof, and this little bit of organic shape here, that, that will be enough so that it's not too stiff. And then I'll throw in all kinds of different shapes. <laughs> I smeared some stuff there. All kinds of different shapes within the light sections. So there's pretty much no way I can kill. This is one of those good ones. Because as long as I keep my lights light over here and my darks in the same area in the shadows, I can't kill it. It's not like the last painting I took home and just really... <laughs> had to throw it out. This one, it's great. There's no way I can hurt it. And um, so I like that when that happens. So I hope, I hope that you give this a shot at home and try doing something big. Try doing a section of a building, not just the whole front of something, and, um, and see what happens. And if you, you know, if you run into problems and you really don't like it, you can always take it off the stretcher bars, throw it out, and um, stretch a new one over that and start all over. Okay, that's it for this, <laughs> this episode of Give Your Walls Some Soul. I hope you had fun, and we'll see you next time. I'm Shannon Grissom.